This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University, and today I want to talk about how things just got difficult for Bitcoin. If you're interested in learning strategies that make money in both bull and bear markets, or you just want to see what I'm trading or investing in, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And also be sure to stick around till the end of the video where I have some amazing statistics that I want to share with you. So what I'm talking about is actually good news. Hopefully I didn't scare any of you too badly. What I'm referring to is the Bitcoin mining difficulty adjustment and it recently just hit 20 times 10 to the 12th. If we take a look at this, this is a measure basically of how difficult it is for miners to mine a new block every 10 minutes. It's hitting new highs as we can see, which is really incredible this far into the Bitcoin, um, sort of the Bitcoin era. Now, how does the difficulty adjustment work? Well, basically it looks at a moving average of how long it took to mine the last 216 blocks. 216 blocks, we have one block mined approximately every 10 minutes. So 216 blocks is approximately every two weeks that this difficulty adjustment kicks into place. Now, what the Bitcoin algorithm does is it looks and sees that if new blocks over this last period have been mined faster than one block every 10 minutes, then the difficulty adjustment will adjust upwards and make it more difficult to mine or find new blocks. If on the other hand, new blocks are being mined more slowly than one every 10 minutes, the difficulty adjustment will adjust downwards and make it easier to mine new blocks. Now the context this is taking place in is that Bitcoin halving that we had in May of 2020 when the reward for mining a new Bitcoin block was cut in half from 12 and a half Bitcoin down to 6.2 five Bitcoin. And I'm trying to see here what the uh, the dollar amount of that is, but basically you can multiply 6.25 Bitcoin times 11,672. So we have this really strange situation and people are always amazed that Bitcoin keeps going where it becomes more and more difficult to mine a new block. As we can see from the difficulty adjustment that I talked about, the total hash rate, which is the total computing power has been hitting new highs for the Bitcoin network. And what this means is that mining is becoming a more and more difficult business. And yet what we're seeing is billions of dollars of new equipment and electricity costs being deployed to mine Bitcoin. And this, the higher the hash rate, the higher the difficulty level, this really ensures, especially the high hash rate, ensures that the Bitcoin network is really secure. And that's one reason that Bitcoin has such a large market cap. Its current market cap is approximately 216 billion. No one is going to store their hard-earned money in a uh, in a cryptocurrency that does not have a really, really secure algorithm and secure network. And this is why it's very difficult for other cryptocurrencies to compete with Bitcoin. Simply the the hash rate that's attached to Bitcoin is so much higher than all the competitors. I think I have a slide on that. Yeah, Plan B did a good one here where he he looked at the different hash rates for Bitcoin, Bcash or Bitcoin Cash, which is a pathetic hard fork of Bitcoin, Ethereum. And Ethereum, it's almost irrelevant because they're trying to move to a proof of stake, uh, proof of stake algorithm rather than proof of work where you actually have miners. I, I have mixed feelings about this. I like Ethereum, I like DeFi. I'm not sure this is the right move though, which is one reason I've been hesitant to deploy any real capital into Ethereum. And then Litecoin. Now, Bitcoin here is measured in exahashes, the hash rate, exahashes per second. And as he points out, I'm gonna make this chart bigger in a second, exahashes are a million times larger than terahashes. So Ethereum is measured, the hash rate is measured in terahashes, and the, uh, the uh, hash rate for Bitcoin is measured in exahashes. So Bitcoin is really a million times um, larger in terms of its hash rate than, uh, than Ethereum. Now, only one of these has increased exponentially since 2018. We can go through and look at these charts. So there's the Bitcoin hash rate, as we saw hitting new highs, actually hitting new highs exponentially. Uh, Bitcoin Cash, Bcash is just dead in the water. It has a much lower, um, much lower hash rate than Bitcoin itself, much less secure. And you can see here how it chops around. The uh, Bitcoin hash, hash rate chart is very steady and doesn't have as many periods of sideways motion. And it's been hitting new highs over the past few years, unlike Bcash. Ethereum, 
is not even back to where it was, or it's almost back to where it was in early 2018. But again, its hash rate is an order of magnitude lower than Bitcoin. And then Litecoin is almost a, uh, seems to almost follow a cycle here. There's no hitting new highs and um, it's uh, at a much lower, uh, much lower rate. It's in terahashes instead of exahashes as well. Now, I also want to take a look at Bitcoin's monthly chart. This is interesting because we have a bit of a divergence here where the network difficulty is hitting new highs, hash rate difficulty is hitting new highs, uh, and Bitcoin is not yet hitting new highs, but I think it's a little bit more bullish than it looks because if you look at this on monthly, uh, on a monthly chart, there's some really big distortions involved because of what happened to Bitcoin in late 2017, where we had this sort of blow off top, where it got very far away from fair value. But if you look at monthly closes, the highest monthly close was uh, December 2017, and it closed, uh, Bitcoin closed at 13,880 approximately on Bitstamp. It traded as high as almost 20,000. The second highest monthly close was just in August of 2020. And you can see the sort of this dotted green line. I don't know if you can see it, it's right here that uh, sort of shows you where we are versus today's price. But the second highest monthly close was 11,655. Right now, we're just uh, five points below that, 11,650. So we really are very close to the second highest monthly close ever. And we're really in this key area where Bitcoin has failed a couple times. It failed in this area uh, and was beaten down and closed uh, closer to the 10 or 11,000 level in June of 2019. But I think it's extremely bullish if you're watching the fundamentals. This gives you an idea of a bit of a leading indicator that the fact that the fundamentals are so healthy, in spite of the fact that we had this Bitcoin uh, having, and it's so much more expensive for the miners to work, but the overall effect is it makes the Bitcoin network much more secure and much more desirable for institutional capital. If we compare this monthly chart of Bitcoin versus the US dollar to XRP versus the US dollar, you probably saw my XRP video yesterday. If you have any interest in XRP, be sure to watch that. And um, you'll learn why I think it's a scam in that. But you can tell you don't even need to watch the video. You can take a look at the price chart. XRP was a pump and dump. It's still being dumped. The insiders are selling it to naive retail investors. And we can see by the price chart here and people who are thinking that that uh, XRP is ever going to go back in the $2 or $1 or $3 range, I believe, are dreaming. This is this is a dead uh, a dead cryptocurrency. Now, the other thing we can talk about, Dan Tapiero has a great quote here talking about how shortages of Bitcoin are now possible simply because Grayscale, which is GBTC, is buying so much Bitcoin. Right now, in the third quarter of 2020, they bought uh, approximately 77% of the amount that was mined of new miner supply. And once this tips over 100%, you'll basically have institutional investors buying more Bitcoin than is being mined. And what this means is that prices will have to go up and go up in order to incentivize current holders of Bitcoin to maybe sell some to these institutional buyers. Here's another great one from BVDDY on Twitter. These institutional buyers are chomping away at the free float, which is how many Bitcoin are available uh, on the exchanges and available that aren't being hodled and socked away in hardware wallets. If we look at the number of Bitcoin that have been bought since uh, from, this looks like this is from July 29th through uh, August 12th, right? It's a little bit hard to see, but I'll link to this. The number of Bitcoin mined is this green thing. The number of Bitcoin added to GBTC is here, and the number of Bitcoin bought by MicroStrategy, which is again, a just a, a very small tech company in the scheme of things. And so we can see that even over this period, the amount that was consumed by institutional investors who say they are never going to sell, people like Microsoft, companies like MicroStrategy, excuse me, uh, they are eating up the entire supply of what is being produced by the miners, by a couple order of magnitudes. It looks like the amount that were mined is roughly, just eyeballing this, about 12,000 Bitcoin. And these institutional buyers bought about 35,000 Bitcoin, so almost 3x the amount that was mined. I encourage you to read this whole thread by BVDDY, talking about how this, this, uh, this mania, this coming huge rise in Bitcoin is not going to be 
a retail investor version, which was the first one really in 20, that peaked in, in 2017. But this one is going to have much larger legs. It has much more capital behind it because it's finally Wall Street getting involved. And we've just this, um, just this year, we've seen more than 10 public entities buy Bitcoin, including Square, MicroStrategy, as I said, and of course, the Bitcoin uh, Trust, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, which is GBTC. Now, on top of all of this, the Fed has now decided to start expanding their balance sheet again. At least it expanded this last week, as, uh, as evidenced in this tweet, boosted its balance sheet uh, by 76, 70, uh, 77 billion. So the balance sheet's been somewhat flat really since, since May, but it looks like if this new fiscal stimulus bill is passed, and it certainly will be passed if not before the election in the next couple of days, but certainly after the election, the Fed is going to have to monetize all the new debt produced. And as we've seen, this has extremely bullish effects on both gold, Bitcoin, stocks, real estate, risk assets in general. But Bitcoin really has this confluence, this coming together of the macro, this macro backdrop of money printing combined with the supply shortages caused by the May 2020 halving, as well as the very strong fundamentals in terms of the hash rate going up. And these miners are very sophisticated. They're mostly industrial um, industrial groups now, and they're, they're not going to be investing uh, billions of dollars into new mining equipment as they have been buying new ASICs this year, unless they thought that the price of Bitcoin was going up and that this was going to be a going concern. So I think this difficulty adjustment, hopefully I didn't scare you too much with the title, is very significant and it's just, it's absolutely amazing to see this network becomes more and more secure all the time. The hash rate goes up and now we have money printing and a flood of institutional money that has already started. And so I think the rest of 2020 and 2021 are going to be absolutely amazing time to be long Bitcoin. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments and critiques in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for listening, and I'll see you in the next video.